What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we are going to talk about the Millennium Arc by Visconti and good old Tetley Orange Pico. I decided to go with this tea today because I figured the pen's super fancy so I might as well, you know, cool my jets and go with a plain Jane tea which I actually call my cottage tea even though it's obviously not labeled that. Um, but I refer to that as um, the cottage tea because it seems to be the one that I drink most often when I'm there. Um, you know, just a little interesting tidbit. I hope it's interesting anyway. <laughs> so the Tetley Orange Pico comes in actually a bunch of different varieties. This one happens to be the decaf variety, um, but you can get regular. Um, you can also even get a bold, which I haven't tried yet, um, but I definitely am interested to pick it up because apparently it's just like a really strong flavor. Um, and this one's kind of mild. It is a black tea, um, but it's, get that out there, maybe. It's a pre-bagged black tea. And it kind of, you smell a little bit of orange, but it's not citrusy, like, you mainly just smell like the tea leaves. Um, I would say it's along the lines of sort of like an English breakfast, but not quite as like gritty as an English breakfast can be, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, it's not overly flavored. Um, so if you don't tend to put like sweeteners or milk or even your own flavorings into, um, other things, then, you know, you're going to get a relatively calm tea experience. Um, but if you do put all those things into it, this could also be a good one to build upon because it is kind of plain. Um, but because it is very simple, very common, it's also very cheap. Um, so this one is a 24 pack, um, which you can get for $3 and 27 cents. Um, I bought this one at Walmart, but you can pretty much buy it anywhere at any grocery store. Um, you can get them in 80 packs um, for $7.73. Um, you can even get them in like 300 packs, but I don't know the pricing. Um, I just saw them online once, um, but 300 tea bags seemed really excessive to me. But that's probably also because I have enough tea to last me until the dawn of time. Like, it's, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I like the fact, you know, that it is a kind of basic tea um, because then if I'm not in the mood for anything like over the top, I just want something simple, then this is what I go to. Um, the decaf version technically isn't caffeine free. There is four milligrams per cup, but that's virtually caffeine free. Um, the regular like just non-decaf version of this um, is, I, I think it's 34 milligrams um, of caffeine per cup. Um, but even that really isn't anything because the average cup of coffee is 90 milligrams or above, especially if you're going to like a Starbucks. Boy, can you ever get a lot of caffeine from those guys. Um, but yeah, so that's the tea for today, which I'm drinking out of hot, hot, uh, a mug that I got when I was in Mesa Verde. You're gonna notice a theme to these mugs if you haven't already, if you've checked out any of the other videos that I have. Um, the vast majority of the mugs that I use um, or have bought are all to do with travel. Um, I'm not a huge like collector of things when I travel, but a mug just seems to be something that I pick up. Um, and I really like to find, again, this is gonna get hot, 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 this one I really like just because it almost kind of was like a cauldron type um, and it actually fits a lot more tea in there than you would really think it would. All right, don't spill. Good. So that is the tea for today. Now let's boogie on into this pen. So this is the Visconti Millennium Arc uh, rainbow finish. There are, I think, three or four other finishes that you could choose from. Um, I bought mine from a retailer in Quebec, 
but um, you know the famous Goulet pens sells all the other finishes as well. So if you want to, you know, check those out, you can always head over to that website. Um, this pen takes one complete turn to remove the cap. It is a screw on cap and push to post. Um, I like the fact that it's a one complete turn because then you don't have to kind of mess around with it for too long um, to reveal the nib and grip section. You can see here it is metaled, um, but it's not very slippery because it does taper um, kind of in the middle. So it's not really slippery even though it is metal. What I'm doing here is actually turning the locking mechanism so that I can compress the crescent filler, um, which is essentially Visconti's name for being bladder filled. Um, one thing that is cool though, Visconti guarantees 100 years against corrosion um, for their bladder. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, so you just compress it and the ink gets sucked up through the nib, through the breather hole which has a, something special I'll show you later. But when you turn the locking mechanism back to its original position, you can't press anymore. So you can't accidentally spill or kind of force the ink back out of the nib. You really have to, to, prep, to turn that locking mechanism. And it's pretty hard too, so you're gonna be safe. Um, as usual, it's a spring-loaded clip. Um, all of Visconti's clips to me work perfectly. Um, I've never ever had an issue with one um, some people like it, some people don't, because you do have to lift the clip before you can clip it onto your shirt or jeans or anything like that. Um, but they always stay in place, and I really, really enjoy that. As I attempt to focus, <laughs> this is the detail around the end of the cap, uh, kind of the center band where it says rainbow, um, since that is the finish that I have. And then you get a really nice sort of swooping design that goes around the back in both directions, um, where in the middle you get that V from Visconti. It's really, really well done. Um, to the naked eye, it's so crisp that you can't really see any flaws with the you know machinery or etching or however they did it. Um, I think they did a really nice job. Mine happens to be 25 out of 200, um, but you know, just random. <laughs> the nib itself is a little bit different. It's actually chromium 18. Um, I don't know exactly the, the makeup of the nib content, but essentially it's a fancy steel as far as I'm aware. Um, and uh, what's kind of cool is that they have it called a, as a tubular nib. So supposedly it gets you a more efficient fill and because it wraps around the nib, which you will see in a moment, um, it takes longer for the nib to dry out. Um, and never ever once have I had an issue where it's dried out. I've never had starting issues. I've never had skipping issues, never ever with this pen, which it is a higher price tag. So I would be, you know, hoping so. Um, one thing I really tried to show you guys here, you'll see in the light, you, the way that the tines um, have a gap in between them. I have not touched this, so this is exactly how it came from uh, to me from the factory. And it is just a fire hose. It is so wet, um, which I really like. I have a fine nib, um, but I really like the fact that it's wet. Um, I prefer wetter writers in general. Um, as you can see here, it says F. And right above the F, where that metal kind of swoops, is the breather hole. So you've got actually a decent space in between the feed, where the breather hole is, and where the grip section starts, so that you don't have to put the whole nib into your ink to fill it, which means that you're you know, supposed to be able to just jump right up and start writing after filling, um, because your grip section is clean. It does work, and it's actually really fantastic, but it takes a while to get used to, um, just to know exactly the placement of the uh, nib. So farther away shot again um, of the exact same things I just showed you. And like I said, the grip section, a lot of people don't like the fact that it's metal. I really enjoy it, um, but I don't have overly oily hands. It could be slippery if you have oily hands, but I don't find it that way. Um, you know, 
to me, I use it as is. I don't post it. It's perfect for my hand. Um, I wouldn't say I have small hands, but I definitely don't have large hands. But for those of you that do, you can post it. Um, I don't recommend it though because it doesn't post all the way because of that crescent filler and it becomes very back heavy. Um, plus, I don't know if it's going to damage the um, material or anything like that. Pardon the uh, shaky camera there, <laughs> but here I have it up against um, some commonly known pens. The Conklin Duragraph, which I just did a review on. Um, the Visconti Van Gogh, Lamy 2000, Lamy All Star, no, Lamy Safari, sorry, and the um, Platinum 3776. It's an average size pen. It's not small, it's not large, it's just perfectly in the middle range. Um, when you uncap them, again, sorry for the shakiness, um, then it's ever so slightly smaller than most pens. Um, it's pretty bang on the Lamy 2000. Um, it's just slightly shorter than the rest. Um, but again, to me, it's the perfect weight. It's the perfect size. Um, and it really fits comfortably in my hand. It's very smooth um, material feeling. And even the threads, they look sharp, but they aren't at all. They're very smooth. Ah, the good old quick brown fox. Gotta love it. This pen is very, very smooth when you use it. Um, I never have any real issues with it. Um, the only time I ever have an issue is when something smears my ink before it dries, which I guess really is the same with all pens. <laughs> um, but like I said, this pen is quite wet, so you do um, have that issue a little bit longer. Um, but I enjoy having like really wet pens like this every once in a while because then I can use an ink that's quite dry um, and you don't notice it. Um, so you have your pens for, for everything. <laughs> um, the only thing I wouldn't really recommend with this nib is reverse writing. You can get like an extra extra fine, um, but it's not a pleasant writing experience. Um, it is kind of scratchy. And it's just, it's not meant to be written that way. Like, it, it fights you when you write it. It really grabs the paper. Um, earlier I mentioned that this is a chromium 18 nib, uh, which essentially just means it's a high-grade fancy steel. Um, so you're not really going to see any line variation. Um, you can definitely spread the tines a little bit and allow more ink to flow um, to get, like, a super wet line. But I don't really see why you'd want to. Um, because it's already such a wet pen, um, but you can if you want to. But like I said, you will not get any line variation. It's quite a stiff nib. Um, but to me, it, it flows so well and it's so smooth anyways that it's not a pen that I go to if I want line variation. Um, and overall, I really, really like it. Um, like I said, there's never been any hard starts, no skips, no nothing. There's just, it's been a solid writer. Um, I don't know if I would consider it an everyday carry just because it's a little on the fancy side. Um, and you do have to commit to the ink that you use because you cannot disassemble this pen. It takes a long time to clean. So guys, typically I like to keep my videos, um, you know, 10 minutes or below. This one was a little bit longer because this was a pen that I know not a lot of people are going to be familiar with. So I wanted to kind of talk about a few more things than I would in like, um, you know, like the Conklin Duragraph that, that uh, was my previous video. You know, a lot of people are a little bit more familiar with that. Um, or the Pilot Metropolitan, which was two videos ago. Um, so if you made it to the end, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate every time you watch, every time you comment. Um, you know, if you really like it, hit the subscribe button and that thumbs up button. It means a lot. Um, and like I said, just throw loads of comments in, in the uh, comment section. I do answer them all. Um, if you got any feedback, any suggestions, anything that you want me to do, um, feel free to let me know. And uh, I will see you very shortly. Cheers. I'm not this red in real life, people, I swear. I also need to get a space heater in my room because it is cold. Well, 
well, it's 20 degrees. It's really not that cold, but 20 degrees Celsius. Americans, Celsius.